Hey, it's Kevin from KD Music. I uh, just thought to do another video showing some of the Softube Console 1 in action. Um, I've been mixing with it for a while now and um, just sort of give a few examples of a couple of uh, things that I've done that probably a little bit outside of the what you traditionally think to use it for, but um, it just shows what it can do. So I've got this song that I was mixing and uh, it just had this vocal sound that was supposed to sort of sit in the background uh, like an echo and uh, I'll play it for you without the console 1 on it and then I'll activate console 1 and then I'll show you what I did but this a dead end roll 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 but this so you can see there's a fair bit of difference between it. So in the track, uh, I ended up having it distorted, a bit echoey, and sitting back. And to actually achieve that with the console one, I've got obviously some EQ on here, some filters, etc. A bit of compression. But the main part I did here is the drive and character. So to get that sound, so I'll just play it and I'll turn these back to normal and then bring them up and you'll see what's happening so the character I'll take to zero I'll take the drive to zero and I'll start playing it and I'll turn them up one at a time but this a dead in roll 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 but this a dead in roll. So it's a great way to get some distortion on there without adding another plugin for distortion. It's just using the internal drive of the SSL. So the next example here, I've got a, a kick drum, and um, it uh, it sounded pretty good, but it just was a little bit clicky for it, and I just wanted to get a bit more out of it. So again, I'll play the play the beat and show you, show you what it's doing. So that's without the plugin. And that was with the plugin. Alright, so again we've got some filters taking top end off. Just cut the low end a bit just to control it. I've got some little bit of EQ, some compression, and again. Uh, I've set the drive to 5, which is what I've been doing pretty much on every track. Um, Softube stated that 5 was the setting to use to get the um, the sound of the SSL board that they analysed when they were creating this. So that's sort of the generic sound, and that's what I set it to without any major drive. The character in this one I've actually lowered. So I'll play the track and show you what that's doing. You'll notice with the character if I so that's at zero. Now if I was to go up, it becomes sort of brighter and more clicky. But with this one I wanted to round it out a bit, and to do that I can go down. Now I could go all the way to ten and that very sort of woolly rounded sound but I was happy with the five now you also notice in the dynamic shape over here I've turned that on and I just added a little bit of punch just to because I rounded that down and just to get a little bit of punch back so I'll show you I'll turn that off and um, turn it back on So, sort of 
because I rounded it off a bit, I just needed to get a little bit of that punch back, and that's what did that. So I just exaggerated just so you can see exactly what it's doing. Okay, so in this next example, I've got this track, which is some ambient strings. Um, it's a synth string part, um, and it, it just sounded a little bit flat um, in the mix. So I thought I'd do just enhance it a bit. So I'll apply it again, same thing. So what I did with this one, a bit of filtering, a little bit of compression, and again, I used the drive and character. I'm really loving these two settings. It gives you a lot of power on any of these instruments to really bring them out, distort them, just change the character of it. So with this one, I've given it some drive to eight, and I've risen the character up to seven, which is making it sort of more brighter. And, um, so I'll play it and uh, wind those down and show you. So it really allowed that to cut through and uh, stand out in the mix. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, here I've got a, a kick drum, it's very subby type kick drum. Uh, and I'll just play it for you with the console one off and then on. So what I did with this one, uh, filters again, bit of compression, and I did a bit of drive on it, just to get some harmonics uh, getting up out of the sub area, and I actually reduced the sustain on this one, so I'll show you the drive and then I'll show you the sustain. So that's where it would sound like at the normal setting I would do. So that just gave it a bit of a bit more grit to it. Now with the sustain, I've actually gone in the negative. So I'll turn that on and off so you can hear what I've done. So I just used that to actually control the sub a bit. I just felt that it was taking over. It was just, it was too long and it was just, yeah, it was really taking over the mix and blurring everything. So I used the sustain to cut it back and get me some control back to that, on that sub. Okay, so in this example, I thought I'd show an entire drum kit and uh, what I did. So. I'll start with the uh, I'll turn console one off all the tracks. All right, so this is basically all the raw tracks, um, and I'll turn that one off. Parallel drums, uh, all the raw tracks with uh, out the console one.
okay so I've just obviously set the levels etc so now I'll start it again and then I'll turn the console one on So obviously you can hear there a huge difference, huge difference. Okay, so we'll go through console one and I'll show you what I have done. So I haven't done anything drastic with these. Most of it's quite simple. You know, a bit of filters on the overheads, some EQ, taking out some EQ there, raising some there bit of compression, the drive I'm setting to 5 which is my standard setting on this um, so there's another overhead uh, that might be for another section of the song though so uh, kick, click Okay, so that one there is a duplicate. So if you look there, there's kick click there. So I duplicated the kick just to get a bit more. I'll play it and show you. allowed the kick drum to cut through the mix a bit better it wasn't coming out so basically all I did was duplicate it I just put uh, a high cut and a low cut filter on and just grabbed this little section bump that up there just to get the nice clicky sound compressed it quite a lot just level matched just to get the level of the plug-in back down and then just blended that in with the original kick And pretty much else, everything else was just a matter of putting filters, filtering out all the unnecessary low end, getting rid of some uh, muddiness in the mids, you know, raising some top end on some things to cut through, doing quite a lot of compression on the room, and um, again, getting rid of the muddiness, raising it up. So just an example, I'll run through. So with the room, this is probably a severe one. So that's what it sounds like. So turn the compression off. Just gets rid of the muddiness. Brightens it up a little bit. And then I just Squashing it down because I don't want too much transit. I've actually used the parallel knob there. It's another good feature of the soft tube. I can blend in, so I can compress really hard and then blend in 50%. I'll, I'll wind that up and show you what that does. So that's dry, 100% dry. That's how much compression I've put on. So that's 100% wet. Go 50% gives it a nice blend of compressed and uncompressed. So everything else is quite simple. There's not really much to say, but I mean the difference, as you heard, was obviously massive. drums are quite flat and uh, muddy alright 
so next we've got the bass guitar okay so this is what the bass guitar sounded like and then I add the console one But then what I did, I needed a bit more out of it, so I actually created a parallel bus, and I'm actually sending, I'm sending uh, pre-fader, everything, the bass guitar to an auxiliary here, and I've got console one on that auxiliary. So if I bring that in, so it's adding a lot of higher top end and some distortion just allows it to cut through because uh, there's some heavier guitars in here so it just needed to add to it so I'll show you what I did in the console one so on the main bus bass track I uh, just cut some of the lows cut a bit of the highs so I've boosted 80 cut out some of the muddiness there get a little bit more click out of the bass and a fair bit of compression and just wound up the drive a little bit just to give it a little bit of uh, grit and then on the, the parallel bass I've cut, cut a lot more of the low out a bit more of the high out so I've just rounded it off Get rid of a bit of muddiness there, some compression, and I've driven it flat chat with the character up just to make it really sort of high and crisp. I'll also notice if you look up here, I've actually changed it from the SSL compressor to the FET compressor. I've got some of the other soft tube plugins, and that allows me, I'll show you if I, it allows me to select one of three compressors at the moment, that's what I've got, so that SSL, that's the one that comes with the console one. I've also purchased the FET compressor and the Summit Audio TLA100. So the FET compressor, you, you can't, it's hard to imagine in the console one because it hides it, but I can show you If I actually load the real plug-in, and you can see what it looks like. So that's the FET compressor. So I'm actually loading that inside the console one. Now you do lose some of the features. So if you actually look, get rid of that. So if you look in the console one, you load the FET compressor. All you get is the ratio, you get a parallel, attack, release, and threshold. Now, you'll notice if you actually load the real plugin, you get all of this detector section down here, which you can't do in the console one. So there is some limitations with the console one, but other than that, the settings are all the same. Um, and it adjusts itself to the compressor. So you'll notice with the ratio here, you get this all setting and these other funny ones. But if I was to change that back to the SSL, it automatically changes that back to its default settings. And then you get the SSL ratio settings as opposed to the FET ones and if I was to load the TLA100 again it changed now you'll notice here I don't have these settings anymore all I have is a fast medium slow attack and a fast medium slow release and a gain reduction And to show that in comparison, that is the TLA, which has the attack, release, 
there's your gain, gain reduction and you've got some other settings again here that aren't available here. You've got the parallel but you can't adjust the saturation or the low cut. Alright, let's bring in a couple of guitars. So, I've got a couple of guitar tracks here uh, and uh, I'll play them as I've done before and then activate console one and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so um, again, pretty simple. Drive, standard setting 5. I haven't done any compression on this because this quite distorted. They're very compressed as it is. I've cut some of the highs off to get rid of a bit of the fizz and uh, got rid of the low end rumble. And then with this track, I've just done a bit of a boost at 3K just to. Uh, give it a little bit more grit and then the other track same again drive same cut the fizz cut the brumble uh, that one's actually doing nothing and same setting so all I did was just boost a bit of 3k and cleaned up the low and high end very simple but you know major change just to show that again. So just as another quick example here, so just to show what you can do with a simple channel strip like console one, uh, I've just got everything back in, so I'll just play this. Uh, it's just the, the instruments, no vocals. And uh, I'll just show you the difference between before and after. So there you go, there's uh, the console one in action again. All right, uh, thank you for watching. Hope it's been interesting or helpful to you. Uh, this is Kevin from KD Music. Um, thank you, bye.